Having said that, inshallah ta'ala, like I said, continue watching to the end so that we are able to understand what does Imam Ali alayhi salam mean when he says, I am the knowledge of God, the hand of God, the eyes of God. For it is important. Why? Because we also, not just to see what do we mean by it, but what did the Shia scholars understand from this? Now, as we know, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example, says along, something along the lines of everything will perish except his face, his wedge, or that he created with his two hands, and so forth. So many would come forward to think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has truly got a body, has truly got hands, feet, face, a side. So it is important, first of all, to understand what do the Shia understand with these verses so that we can slowly, slowly understand the exact words of Ali ibn Abi Talib, Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. Let us go to the book of Shaykh al-Saduq. Now the first narration that I stated in the beginning of the show was the, a narration or the sermon of Imam Ali alayhi salam within Kitab al-Tawheed, the other book of Shaykh al-Saduq. He has also another book called I'tiqadat al-Imamiyya. In this book, he discusses and shows what do the Shia Ithma Ashari Imamis, the Shia Twelvers, the Imamis believe. What do they truly believe? He states, Know that our belief concerning Tawheed is that Allah, exalted is He, is one and absolutely unique. There is naught like him. He is prior, Qadim. He has never, he, and he, he never was non-existent and never will be. He is the hearing, the seeing one, the alim, the knowledgeable, the wise, the living, the everlasting, the mighty, the aziz, the holy, the knowing one, the powerful, the self-sufficient. He cannot be described by his essence, his body, his form, or by his accidental qualities, irada, nor in terms of length, nor breadth, surface, weight, lightness, motion, place, or time. He, excelled is He, transcends all the attributes of His creation, of His creatures, sorry. He is beyond both limitation of transcendence and of imminence. He is a thing, but not like other things. He is unique, eternal, refuge. He begets not, lest He may be inherited nor is he begotten, lest he may be associated. There is no one like un unto him. He has no equal, no opponent, no compare, or no concert. Nothing can be compared with him. He has no rival, no partner. Human eyes cannot behold him. While he recognizes the power of eyes, the thoughts of men cannot compass him while he is aware of them. Slumber overtakes him not, nor sleep. So this is in verse Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 255. Slumber overtakes him not, nor sleep. So he states now, he is gracious and the knowing one, the creator of all things. There is no deity other than him. To him alone belongs the power of creation and authority. Blessed is Allah, the Lord of the worlds. He also, uh, he who believes in tashbih to something like Allah is a mushrik, a polytheist. And he who attributes to the Shia, the Shia's beliefs other than those that have been stated concerning the unity of Allah, the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a liar. 
Imran, you are a liar. For you have lied when you said that Shia believe that Ali ibn Abi Talib is Allah. Wa'udhu billah. You have lied yet again. Anyway, we'll continue. And every report, contrary to what I have stated concerning Tawheed, is mawdu' so that it is a fabrication. Every tradition which does not accord with the book of Allah is void. And it and if it is to be found in the books of our doctors, it is doubtful. That means if any traditions that go against that which he has stated or, or, or that goes against the Quran, if we have doubt or that we leave it, it's fabrication. As for the reports which lead ignorant persons to imagine that Allah is comparable to his creatures like you, like the Salafiyya, like the Wahhabis, like many of your companions, many of the second generation and the third generation and those who came after them. For it was you guys that have compared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to his creatures. By stating he has a hand, by stating he has feet, by even reporting narrations that Allah is a small boy, with a, he's a beardless man wearing golden shoes. Many of those who are non-Muslims that would watch this would think that these individuals who go by the name of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah believe in a fairy tale. He continues, so he states, as for the reports which lead ignorant persons to imagine that Allah is comparable to his creatures, their meaning can be understood by significance of similar passages in the Quran. For example, listen to this, everything is perishable except his face, his wedge. It's in Surah 28, verse 88. See what he what we understand the Shia. Now the meaning of wedge in this context is deen, religion. And wedge is that whereby Allah has attained and wherewith one can turn to him. And in the Quran we have, so he stated another verse, in Surah 60, 68 verse 42 to 43, on the day when the leg shall be bared and there shall be summoned to prostrate themselves, but they cannot. Humbled shall be their eyes. Abasement shall overspread them, for they had been summoned to prostrate themselves while they were yet unhurt. Now the saq, this is the, the Arabic word of the leg that, they, that has been translated, means the result or consumption of the affair and its intensity. Not feet. For example, you see in Sahih al-Bukhari where they say that yes, Allah will put his foot on hell or in hell and he'll say stop, stop, stop. As if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa a'udhu billah is playing football in, uh, in hell. Astaghfirullah. And there occurs in the Quran, so he stated another verse, lest the soul shall say, O oh, woe to me, for what I neglected in my jenb side towards Allah. This is Surah 39 verse 50, uh, 56. Here jenb means obedience. And we have also in the Quran, he gives another example. Surah 15 verse 29. And I breathe into it of my spirit. Many would come to think, if you read these verses in a literal sense and you're an individual that takes the Quran in its literal sense and do not understand that the Quran has many layers, that the Quran is far greater than it just being taken from a literal sense, you would have to come to the conclusion that God has a body. Wa'udhu billah. So when he says my spirit, now he created that spirit. Listen to what the Shia believe. Now he created that spirit and Allah breathed it into Adam and Isa, Jesus alayhi salam. He only said my ruh. 
And as he has said, for example, my house, does Allah have a house? Does Allah, for example, says my garden, does Allah have a garden? No. We are saying he is the creator of the house. He is the creator of the garden. He is the creator of the fire. He is the creator of earth. He owns these things, for example, the spirit, the soul, the house, the slave, the garden, the fire, the earth. Also in the Quran, he says, both his hands are outspread. In Surah 5, verse 64, Shaykh al-Saduq, he states, by which is meant the good of this world and the good of the next world. He continues to explain in Surah 51 verse 47 And the sky we built it by our hands Here yad, hands, means strength And similarly his word exalted is he He continues also Remember our slave David possessed of yad Surah 38 verse 18 He possessed strength, quwa that's what it means. It doesn't mean that Allah had his hands outspread. For example, here you'd see in Quran, uh, in Quran, in the Quran, Allah Azza wa Jal states in Surah 38, verse 75, O oh, Iblis, what prevents thee from adoring? What, have I, what I have created with my two hands. What do the Shia say? What did Muhammad and Ali Muhammad teach us? For those who go against the oneness of Allah from the teachings of Ali Muhammad, of course you are going to come to that conclusion. Truly, truly, I am shocked to hear, for example, these so-called ex-Shias, where they say, I became a Sunni, as they like to say the word Sunni. I became Sunni for I found the true Tawheed there. What true Tawheed? Limiting Allah, giving Allah a body. How could you even come to that conclusion? Now I agree with you. Now my next statement will probably be cut out because they, they love these statements. I agree with you. That many of our khutaba, our lecturers, uh, many of them state outrageous incorrect statements and that is the reality i have to be fair and it goes against the teachings of ali muhammad we are an, on a constant academic war against this within the shia world truly so he states by two hands he means so he's, he's um giving tafsir what he means by my two hands it means my power and strength my qudra and quwa. And in the Quran, verse uh, chapter 39, verse 67, and on the day of resurrection, the whole earth will be in his possession. So in uh, basically in his palm, in his hand, in his fist. Which means, he states here, that is to say it will be his property and no one will share the earth with him. Yes, the earth is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in the Quran, we have, he also states, and the heavens shall be rolled up in his right hand. In Surah 39, verse 67 again. So, uh, Surah 39, sorry, verse 67. By right hand is meant his power, his qudra. Now, again, I am reminding the audience, I am going through this so that we can understand that when, when, when I come to the words of Imam Ali Ali, so when he says, I am the eye of God, the hand of God, you understand slowly from the origin of it, from the Quran, what is meant by it, so you can understand it when, when we do the commentary or take the understanding from the scholars with regards to this sermon. 